And we're back. This week we're on Viper today. So it's 36 feet, 29 mils. It's a one to two ratio. Well, one, 2.2, close enough. And most of the structure in this pattern is about from very little to no oil around one, two, to I'd say the biggest shelf on about board 12. So it's structured, but it's a very flat structure. So that's gonna mean you're gonna have to play a lot of different angles as the pattern breaks down. So the way that I like to play this pattern, and the way I see best is, at first, when, when you're in practice, you wanna start out going you know, around the first arrow, see how much your ball is hooking off the gutter. And the gutter is gonna be a friction point. Well, not necessarily the gutter, but boards one through six are gonna be a pretty good friction point. And you wanna gauge how much your ball is gonna hook off it. So if you can go right up it, that's good. But if you gotta, if you gotta really open your angles up from the start, that's okay. But you don't necessarily need to be right of, or you know left of 15 at the arrows. You can probably stay around eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 in that zone, depending on how strong of a ball you're using. Now, when this pattern opens up and you gotta move left, don't be afraid to get your feet going left and really point it at the gutter. Now, if you're in a high traffic environment, you're going to see the lane kind of cliff up a little bit, but in that case, you can try to blend it out with some stronger bowling balls. But inevitably, you'll be a little bit further left throwing it with some pretty open launch angle into the, well, not into the gutter. You don't want a gutter ball, but like towards the gutter. That's my kind of tip for success on this as far as lane play goes. cover stocks. This is important for this pattern. You do not want to come out here with too strong of a ball. So I'd say the predominant core I'm going to use is symmetrical. Unless it's some special numbers, RGs, asymmetric ball that has been like trick laid out, you can throw it on this. But generally I'm going with a symmetric ball. The resurgence I used in this video has a 040 diff with a pretty low RG, so that's about 2.5, that's pretty early. So you can, get a, you can get a stronger ball like that, and as long as it's drilled right, you can get to stop and go up the lane with it, or, or use it as a ball you're gonna start to open your angles up with. And then I noticed um, some weaker cores with higher RGs as the lane starts to open up, really good. So like, the, this matchup Black Pearl was amazing when the lane started to get drier. So I used the core of 257035, and I drilled it strongly, and I drilled one with a long pin with a strong flaring layout and a short pin with a strong flaring layout, and you can see them in the video how they're just super angular, but not so much in the front part of the lane. Cover stocks. I, the, I like to use sanded cover stocks on this, some solid shell balls, but I will gravitate towards a pearl if it has surface, but it can't be, it has to be a pretty slow response to friction pearl cover stock. Otherwise, I stuck with a solid or a hybrid shell in my hand. So that's it for cover stocks and cores.
especially on urethane balls for this pattern. Now there's so much volume that you really don't need a urethane ball unless you have a hard time with how much it hooks on the fresh back ends when you first start out. But I noticed, yes, I threw up a widow urethane in this video, but that was just to show you what urethane does on it. And I ended up having to move further and further right the more I used it. So the, when it, but when I used it, the layout was super strong, high flaring, read as early as possible with a lot of surface. Now that didn't, that only looked okay for a little while, but I, I genuinely believe you're gonna strike more with a um, reactive resin ball. But if you do decide to use urethane, definitely drill your black hammers, your purple hammers, uh, those, and your uh, pitch blacks. You want those balls to be drilled pretty strong. Now, for the reactive balls, I had some shorter pins on some weaker balls, and then I had a little bit uh, on my higher flaring symmetrics, I had a little bit shorter pin and a longer pin for when I needed to go straighter, and then one for when I needed to open my angles up. And then surfaces, I generally kept the stronger balls around about 2,000-ish. That way they got down lane, but they weren't so early um, that I just couldn't throw them. And then I had a, another strong, higher flaring ball that was a little on the shinier side, like 3,000. That way I could really curve it with it. But generally, if I'm trying to go a little straighter on this pattern, I'm gonna use a little bit more surface, like 1,000 grit. <laughs> If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. If you, if you guys want to support the channel, like and subscribe. So if you guys thought this was cool or you want to see some more patterns, give me a specific PVA pattern and maybe I'll do that one next. Thanks for watching.